Saturday worship, 121, 23, 11 a.m., 11 a.m. Connecticut. And welcome back to Lebanon after a 17-day hiatus. So we will do the prelude intro, and we will get started on a Saturday morning in New England. Prelude today is All Things Through Christ. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Thank you, choir. That was very pretty. And yes, we can do all things through him. And here are your announcements for today. The next train trip is March 4th to New York City. It's a mixed bag of Shoreline East and Amtrak and no Metro North for this occasion. 
as we will be in a different part of town. We are back to work on Monday, finally, after our 35 days of being away. We are ready to get the ball rolling as this semester that will naturally lead to earn our wages to get a new Wilbur. Right, buddy? Right. See? He hears. And the testimony of life content will be presented throughout Lent begin on March 15th. How did I come up with that date, you may ask? Because I looked at what at when Palm Sunday is, when Monday, Thursday is, Good Friday, and Easter is. So it looks like it's in early April. So I figured spring break, March 15th, we'll be able to start presenting that. By the way, for those for that presentation, there will be no there will be no PowerPoint for that for that. It'll be how it used to be recorded. And we will go on from there. Anything else you want to talk about this morning? No. Well, we come before him this after, this morning in this time of excitement and the time of change and the time of transition. As we begin our walk. Not only to a new Wilbur but also our walk to the cross. As this time of year, we think about his teachings and what he taught us leading up to those sad moments to receive the call to worship. As we come together to worship, we remember the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the shadow of death, light has dawned. In the light, our joy is increased. The weight of our burdens is relieved. And we offer thanks to the Lord, our God. And will you please rise and say with me, our opening to him, one bread, one body. One bread, one body, one Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless. We, the many, throughout the earth. We are one body. Hey. 
of the earth. We are one body in this one, Lord. Lord, we come before you this morning knowing that you are one bread and one body. You are the leading and guiding God. You have opened the doors to us for true service. We are encouraged to become involved in ministries of peace and justice. The light of promise is reflected in your spirit, which rests in each one of us. Get us ready to serve you. Guide our lives as we learn more of what you would have us do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high, 107. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debts to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. All right. Our anthem is Jesus, You're My Place.
All right, thank you, Quiet. That was very pretty. And yes, he is our place. So we come to the place of prayer this morning, and it is a time where we can lift each other up in good times and bad times. There is a lot that we can pray about this morning. Obviously, we want to think about this low point again that I've gotten myself into being depressed and just not. Just not having the ambition to do the things that I enjoy doing. We also want to think about getting this semester off to a good start. Not a dreadful one like last semester. And there's other things that we can pray about as well. And as always, I will give you opportunity to look at those that you know. And our first thought today is 2108. Oh, how I loved you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me, and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life, what more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Lord, this morning we come before you. Lifting your name on high, that you are our place. In the night when we have nowhere to go, no one to turn to, you are there. You continue to reveal yourself to us in a lot of ways. And as we think about a new semester, a new year, a new hope, we know what is to come here in 2023. A new Boston, the job continuing on. Unlike a year ago where we were sitting here wondering whether or not 
things would change. But things did change for the better in 2022. And here we are in the weigh-in moment of this winter break. I would pray that you get me out of this low, depressive state. The moodiness. Grumpy. No ambition. As we know, that comes with no mental simulation. And that also leads to being bored. But you have guided us throughout this break. And as we look towards the future, we know when a new Wilbur comes, it'll be like night and day. We continue to pray for all of those affected by COVID-19. We continue to pray for Charlie, Eduardo, and all other people out there. The other people that may have done us wrong, that we want to set right. As that is what I'll be talking about in the message. We continue to pray for Grandma's roommate. Hoping that he just stays put wherever he is. Get the help he needs and not at the cops here like last weekend. Well, there is a lot of good that we can look forward to here. The negative always seems to come in. We want to give mom and dad the hope and encourage them that we are more than capable of raising a new pup. Show responsibility and for the viewers at home we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know And so it's to this end. Throughout these next few months, we'll be following you and your teacher. But, but as we know, like every year at this time of year, the good times for you happen. But as we get into March and into April, the things get turned upside down. And then you will guide us every step of the way. As it is in that prayer that you taught us, say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, how he loves you and me, and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. 
He gave his life, what more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Jesus to Calvary, it go, it go. His love pure sinners to show. What he did there brought hope from despair. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Very good. So it is operatory time. Me and uh, it's a chance for you guys to continue to subscribe to this channel as this channel continues to Draw more attention, and that is awesome. I'm telling you, I think it has something to do with a certain bird and a certain cat. And, of course, those football simulations really are helping this show grow and get noticed. By the way, coming up later today, it will be all of the divisional round games, and one of them, you will see the Patriots in them. And I'm and that one will be a surprise. But at this point, please subscribe to this channel. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and be sure to check out some of those other videos that I've been making as well. And the offertory today is God of the City by Chris Tomlin. And remember. As long as you see me in the little box on the lower right, it means it's fair use. So, God of the City by Chris Tomlin. God of this city, you're the king of these people, of this nation. There is no one like our
We believe in you, God. Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen lord you're the god of this city and town and you have drawn our path to you so take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world as we have made it to the spring semester and we look forward to seeing what that has in store and what the rest of 2023 has in store for us in jesus name amen please be seated all right we are back from running errands so the reading today comes from Isaiah 9, 1 to 4, and then 1 Corinthians 1, 1 to 18. And we are talking about when it becomes a game in relationships and picking up the red flags. So while we have a little bit of time, we will continue on our service here today. Isaiah 9. But there'll be no darkness for those who were in trouble. Earlier he did bring the lands of Zebulun and Naphtali into disrepute. But the time is coming when he'll make the whole area glorious. The royal on the sea, the country past the Jordan, international Galilee. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For those who have lived in the land of deep shadow light, sunbursts of light. You repopulate the nations. You expanded its joy. Oh, they're so glad in your presence. Festival of joy, the joy of great celebration, sharing rich gifts and warm greeting. The abuse of oppressors and cruelty of tyrants, all their whips, clubs, and curses is gone. Done away with the deliverance as the president sent his Gideon's old victory over Midian. And now the first Corinthians 1, 1 to 18. <clears throat> I 
I, Paul, have been called and sent by Jesus the Messiah. According to God's plan, along with my friend, I send this letter to you in God's church at Corinth. Believers cleaned up by Jesus and set apart for a God-filled life. I include in my greeting all who call out to Jesus. Wherever they live, he's their master as well as ours. May all the gifts and benefits that come from God, our Father, and the Master Jesus Christ be yours. Every time I think of you, and I think of you often, I thank God for your lives with free and open absence to God given by Jesus. There's no end to what has happened in you. It's beyond speech, beyond knowledge. The evidence of Christ has been clearly verified in your lives. Just think. You don't need a thing. You've got it all. All God's gifts are right in front of you. As you wait expectantly for our master Jesus to arrive on the scene for the finale. And not only that. But God himself is right alongside to keep you steady and on track until things all wrapped up by Jesus. God, who got you started in this spiritual adventure, shares with us the life of his son and our master Jesus. He will never give up on you. Never forget that. I have, ser I have a serious concern to bring up with you, my friends. Using the authority of Jesus, our master, I'll put it urgently as I can. You must get along with each other. You must learn to be considerate of one another, cultivating a life in common. I bring this up because some from Chloe's family brought a most disturbing report to my attention, that you're fighting among yourselves. I'll tell you exactly what I was told. You're all picking sides, going around saying, I'm on Paul's sides, or I'm for Apollos, or Peter is my man, or I'm in the Messiah group. I ask you, has the Messiah been chopped up into little pieces so we can have each have a relic all our own? Was Paul crucified for you? Was a single one of you baptized in Paul's name? I was not involved with any of your baptisms except for Christmas and Gaius. And on getting this report, I'm sure glad I wasn't. At least no one can go around saying he was baptized in my name. Come to think of it, I also baptized Stephanus family. But as far as I can recall, that's it. God didn't send me out to collect a following for myself but to preach the message of what has done, excuse me, of what he has done, collecting the following for him, and he didn't send me to do it with a lot of fancy rhetoric of my own, lest the powerful action of the sinner, Christ on the cross, be trivialized into, into more mere words. The message that points to Christ on the cross seems like a sheer silliness to those hellbent on destruction, but for those on the way of salvation, it makes perfect sense. This is the way God works. And more powerfully, as it turns out, it's written, I'll turn conventional wisdom on his head. I'll expose so-called experts as shams. Here ends the reading. And may God have a blessing to the reading of these holy words. And we will continue to look through 1 Corinthians as we continue our walk into Lent. So when does it become a game? It becomes a game when one person doesn't take you seriously. It could be based on whether or not you were going to meet up with them. Maybe you were going to go to Dave and Buster's with them, just for example purposes. And you go there and they, are, and they don't show up. And you tell them, you, and then you ask them, where are you? Then they give you an answer of I don't know, or IEK. Clearly, in a roundabout way, that is them telling you, they're not, they're not going. They're not, they're not going to see you. It's because it's not what they want to do. As I've talked about numerous times, especially last year and in the first season of these services, when the pandemic started, I, I've been telling you guys it has to be equal. It has to be a give and take where you do one thing that the, that the other person likes and then they do something that you like. It has to be equal.
it seems like in the world that we live in, everybody's out for themselves. Basically, every man for himself or every woman out for herself. It becomes a game and we see the red flags everywhere. And then we realize that we didn't do anything wrong. We thought we did something right. But the reality is, they blame us for something that we didn't do. How is that fair? It's not fair at all. It clearly gives an example of how we live our lives day in and day out. Yes. It is understood that we want a new relationship, a new friend, and a new Wilbur. Okay. That all of that is understood. All of those things are within reach if we go about it the right way. For example, getting a new Wilbur means to pay off mom and dad, and then over the summer, go look for a breeder, and then Boom, then you have somebody new. A new relationship is possible if we meet people in the right way. Now, in the age of social media, and obviously in the era of the hookup apps and whatnot, it seems like that's the only way to really meet people. But is there another way? Is there? That is the only question that you have to answer for yourself. Is there another way where you can meet somebody, go hang with them, and then they don't and then they don't turn on you saying, Oh, you did this, you did that, you did XYZ. Is there a way? Well the reality is there may not be a way. Think about this. Just think about this. Has there ever been a time in your life where you felt you were doing something right, but then the other person says, no, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, leave me a comment below, I want to know. Or, or, or if you agree, hit that like button. The thing is, when it becomes a game, and when, it, and when we realize that we are in harm's way, that's when we leave. That is when we remove ourselves from the situation and we go home. I've done this so many times where I felt like I've done something right. And then we just, then we come home. And then we feel like crap. We, then we feel like it was a waste of time, resources, and so on. Think about what happened on Wednesday. Just going to IHOP, a simple lunch, to meet with somebody, talk with them, and maybe sort of figure out a common ground of where we where things could go. But then you come home three hours later, then they are in your face saying, oh, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you did this wrong. Well, the reality is you don't, you actually don't, you actually haven't done anything wrong because what we have just learned is when they say that to us, it usually means that they did something wrong and they would rather point the finger at you saying that you did that you were in that you were in the wrong for whatever reason you did something to take them off. Maybe you didn't do anything. Maybe you, maybe, maybe you tipped them off for just breathing. This is what he's saying. Was Paul crucified for you? Was, did, did we get baptized in Paul's name? No. No. Jesus was crucified for us, and he rose again on the, on the third day. And he is alive even now. And he, and he helps us pick up 
the pieces when we feel like we can't do anything right. And when we realize that, you know what, we're better off probably just being in our room with the door locked and not coming out. That's when we have a, that's when we have episodic episodes where it's where we feel like we can't do anything. Where we feel like all of our goodness that's in us is washed away. Well, the thing is, it doesn't, guys. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be a way in which you have to pander to other people. It shouldn't be that way. As it says in Isaiah 9, the people in darkness have seen a great light, and that light is Jesus. We have seen the great light a month ago when he was born in that manger and he was and he is alive. Now we look at, and the reason why we kind of fast forward into the New Testament in 1 Corinthians is because it go, they go hand in hand. Meaning that let me read part of it again to you, so just so you can see my point. God didn't send me out to collect a following for myself, but to preach the message of what he has done, collecting a following for him. And he didn't send me to do it with a lot of fancy rhetoric of my own, Lest the powerful action of the Sarah, Christ on the cross, be trivialized into mere words. Right. It's being. And then he goes on and says, and then I'll turn conventional wisdom on its head. I'll expose so called experts at shams. Exactly. This conventional wisdom that we have within ourselves, say, of being like, you know what? This is who I am. I cannot change who I am. It's like we can't change the fact that we have certain medical conditions and so on because those were professionally diagnosed. Those things don't go away. But it's learning to live alongside and to cope with the fact that you will meet people with special needs. Powerful actions to serve. This is what it is. Their powerful action is to make you look bad. You get blamed for something you didn't do. You know, you get blamed because you basically showed up. All of those things. Actually, people have done that. And we can't change who we are. Because isn't that why we are all here? Isn't that why we are all individuals? Isn't that why we are all different? It is. And as we come to his table today, think about this. When it becomes a game, and when we are picking up the red flags that he has already picked up for us. And we will continue this message next week. Amen. Our communion hymn is the usual one, 2269, Come Share the Lord.
we gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the love and Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the love. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Find our forgiveness here. We in turn forgive our he joins us here. He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. The sin he meets us here in the breaking of the bread. We'll gather soon, we'll gather soon, where angels say, where angels say, we'll see the glory of our Lord. We wait, come take the bread, come drink the cup. Come share the Lord. And our communion anthem is given for you. Yeah. 
sang a hymn and went out. So on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And after blessing it, he said, in this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So as often as we eat the bread and we drink from the cup, we're reminded that he is the living Christ who is alive even now in 2023. And he has helped us pick up the red flags in any relationship that we have been in. And he will always be with us. As will our loved ones, the people that love and care about us now and always. Let's pray. 
Lord, as we are at your table, we are reminded of your sacrifice, the sacrifice that you made for each and every one of us. This table is a symbol of what is to come. And as we leave this sacred place today, may we remember its glory for what you have done for us. Amen. Closing him today is 590 sets all the Jesus I surrender. All to Jesus, to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I I surrender all, all to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken, Take me now, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender All to Jesus I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine. May thy Holy Spirit fill me, may I know thy power divine. I surrender, for I give myself to thee. With thy love and power, let thy name fall on me. I surrender. I surrender all.
All right. Receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you walk through life. And he help you find where the red flags are in search of a new relationship that is meaningful. And thank you for watching and have a great weekend.